And now let's uh, look inwards now and uh, have a conversation on supply chain management. Uh, it continues to gain popularity globally, not just in Nigeria. More people than before acquiring knowledge in this area. If you check online, you see a lot of supply chain uh, courses made available. So we decided to look at one of our sectors, major sectors, agriculture, Agricultural, agricultural sector in Nigeria and uh, examine the supply chain management in that area. And to help us do that uh, is uh, Mr. Tunde Banjoko of Banjoko Motunde Farms. Now, uh, he's uh, directly involved in, his, uh, in it and uh, should be in a good position. Uh, good to see you, Mr. Banjoko. Thank you so Thank much you, Ine, for joining morning. us. And a beautiful studio, I must commend. Thank this you so much. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good to have you in our new studio. <laughs> So um, the issue of supply chain management has become very sophisticated yeah. in recent times. Uh, the more complex the world gets, the, the more, more technology, the more demands, the more products, the more complicated the supply chain. Yeah. But let's, let's dovetail into our own agricultural sector. Oh. Do we have an organized supply chain? Uh, no, no, or everybody don't. do what you like no, or no. what you know we, how to we, do? We don't at the moment. It's still a disorganized sector. And uh, one of the projects the agric industry said we're going to work on this is to have a private led agro commodity, kind of, but I'm not sure that is being enforced at the moment. And I think we can actually look, because we've not done anything about it, that is actually one of the reasons I personally believe we are where we are today in terms of the rising food prices. You know, looking at uh, the consumer price index, for example, Agric is doing food, is doing about 65%. That's why the inflation keeps going up. And you look at what we've been doing, even as a government, as individuals, we are not doing so much. If I could give maybe one or two indicators to that, we have as a, as a nation, we have a storage capacity of about 1,050,000 capacity for storage. But we are using just about 27% of it, about 261,000. So meaning, bulk of what we are producing, we are not storing. And in 2020, we look at the value of our post-harvest losses, for example. Yeah, I think that's about 50%. 3.5 trillion was wasted. The value of food that didn't get to the table. And yet, we do so, say we do not have enough so, food. So, so you ask yourself, why are food expenses? Is that we don't have enough? Or we are not managing. So that's why supply chain is very important. Because if we can say, we've not gotten the figure for 2021, the value. So if only 2020, one year, we are talking of 3.5 trillion. It tells me that if we do the figure for the last five years, I'm sure it might be in the range of over 10 trillion that has been wasted. And it's something we can always see. You know, like I always say, wasted, you drive down. Especially when you travel Nigeria and you are not just flying, flying driving down, you, you get to some state, you see foods wasting away, not even getting to the next community. Mm. So I, I, can, I can tell you that <laughs> firsthand, because I remember when I did a trip between some states in the northern yeah. part of Nigeria, you go yeah. maybe from Kaduna to Kano yeah. to Bochi, just along the road, Those. you see a lot of tomatoes and pepper just, you know, wasting, wasting away. away. You know, some are trying to preserve it locally, so they just spread it out there. But yeah. eventually, nothing comes so, out so, so of it. it. It's really a big industry. And when you look at the value that has been put on that, it's over $200 million. That industry alone, not even production, that if we can organize... Not even the value chain. Just organizing ourselves. What people can make in between the production... And the table, it's over $200 million. And then that even 2 million people in Nigeria can get involved. Because when you look at what are we talking about really, is this thing has been produced, about 90% of what we consume is from the small other farmers, 80% of them. So meaning the large players are really not the one feeding us, it's the small players when they're aggregated. So when these people produce and it can't get to us, we are in trouble. And that's what we are suffering now as a nation. Because uh, supply chain involves, we talk about where it's being produced, how it's being, is it being moved, how is it being processed, how is it getting to the table, and then it has to also get to the table in a sustainable way. So in meaning, good quality. So it has to be sustainable. So, and if we are not paying attention to that, we might still be going through what we are going through 
as a nation. So is this just about the issue of infrastructure or is it a matter of just putting on our thinking t uh, caps and putting the logistics in place? Of course, it has to start with the thinking. Um, for example, if I could mention, Lagos State did something about a week ago in Ekwe, having an hub for storage and to ease logistics of moving food into Lagos. That's one thing that is very laudable, and it's one of the things we should be thinking of. I think Professor Pato told me and some other guys Yeah, did, well, I mean, Lagos State did it. How impactful is it now? No, no, they just started. It's not, okay. uh, we're not going to have the effect <laughs> of it today. No, no, no. But it's what every state should be thinking of that how do we keep, preserve what is being produced in such a way that instead of people just wasting this thing away, we can keep them for when it is not in season. Like I proposed something in, I think, 2016, to be or either we can preserve plantain for six months in such a way that when it is in season, you keep them. Because that's what value chain is all about. It means when it is in season, it's always in volume. You always have demand, I mean, supply exceeding demand. So supply chain tells us when these things are exceeding our demand, what are we doing with the excess? We should keep them in such a way that we can have them sustainable all year round. The cons I mean, the consumers are being thought of in the process. But if we are not doing that, then we'll keep having these issues of when mango is in excess, you have this, when cassava price will keep going up, nobody's regulating. But as long as people start coming into the value chain, into the supply chain, the real proper supply chain, starting with the thinking of what can we do? Because we are not having, yes, we have issues of production, but if we, with what we are producing, can put a proper structure, starting with warehousing, some product can be warehouse. Gary, for example, people warehouse for six months, fresh. There's a way you pack them. So when you have Gary, in, I mean, in high supply, what do we do with them? Keep them. Either government or private individuals can do. Or palm oil, do people do that? They keep them when they're in high, like we are just ending the session for palm oil now. People will keep them October, November, December, they'll sell at a higher price. But if the government and some individuals are more involved, will not be seen it at higher price during those periods. What we'll just be seeing is we'll still be having regular supplies of all those products. So we should start thinking both government, individual. Like I said, I don't know the state of what Pastor Tommy is doing in uh, those states now because they started one as well. I don't know how far they've gone. But if we start having such ops in different geopolitical zones, in different states, I think we will have a structure. And then there's money to be made, really. Yeah, so there's money to I be wanted made. to ask, <laughs> it sounds more like business opportunity for private, uh, private sector. Sincerely, it's a good area. We should, we, I'm a farmer, for example. We don't all have to go to the farm. What they can do is, what we have produced, can somebody find a way to move them from where they've been produced to where they are needed? Can somebody provide storage? For example, there are modern storage facilities for grains. Can somebody invest in them? I know somebody is doing one in Joss, and I think he did one in Akure as well, where you can keep grains, cocoa, things like that for a longer period. So those are the things we should be thinking of. So there's money to be made, really. And we need the government and the private, because really what I'm more concerned about this is if we are not keeping and storing them, then we are going to discourage those that are producing because the price will be crashing on them. Hmm. Because and then we'll continue having this post harvest so losses. So people will start, like we've witnessed in 2022, a lot of people are just saying, even the one we produced, the prices are not good. So they are not even motivated to produce more. And the more people are stopping in that area of production, the prices will be going up in the market. And now we're talking about how to attract, especially the youth, into the agriculture sector. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I, th I think the youth of these days, they're they are, they are in a hurry. Yeah, I know. They're not so patient. <laughs> so, no, no, so if there's no ready market and there's no um, a chain that would offtake it, from of them. course, starting from having a mechanized farming to yeah. start with, then so, I don't know how we can attract so, the so, fresh so, blood. So, so once you know that, okay, once I produce, even though if I don't have a ready-made of taker, there's a government institution or there's, I mean, a private entity that will mop up this volume at this minimum price. If I could use some, if I'm allowed, you know, for example, you look at the price of cassava in the market, for those of us that are supply industries, it has really crashed. Let me tell you the truth. Most people are saying, I'll wait a little. I won't have this now. 
Because when you look at the numbers with what you imputed, it's not justified. So let me say, I'll keep paying my staff, keep maintaining my farm. Let me see what the price will look like in two months. Because nobody wants to run at a loss. Because the funds are also not cheap that we are using. So to encourage youth and anybody coming, we must have people mopping it up. We must have people going into processing. We must have people providing cold storage for moving products that require cold storage. So those are, it's, a, it's really an opportunity for us to make more money. Yeah, in well, I think you just hit the nail on the head. <laughs> uh, I think our viewers have to know that there's money to be made, actually, yeah. if you follow the agricultural supply chain. So please, we do need more investors in the agricultural we sector need. to feed the nation, feed <laughs> Nigeria. We don't need to have uh, food insecurity if you put your money in the agricultural sector. Yeah. I guess I have to say that because we all eat. No, and that's the first. All, that's the first need of that's man. That's the first need, mm -hmm. and then because of where we also have found ourselves, uh, and it's also sustainable. You know, when people, when investors are thinking, they are thinking of: Is this scalable? Is this sustainable? This is scalable. Is sustainable? Sustainable. And there's the market. You know, mm -hmm. when we talk about Nigeria population is 206 million, meaning we have the market. Yes. And you know, I was also looking in the past few days, looking at even our export there's also the opportunity for us. The if we have if we that some of these things, I think we exported 1.7 trillion in the last four years, and we imported about 3 point, maybe 3.8 <laughs> trillion. don't even go there. <laughs> <laughs> so, meaning if we manage very well, yeah. we'll have enough both for we local can deal production with account deficits. and then we can yeah. also Thank have enough so for much, export. Um, Thank you so much, Mr. Chief Executive Officer of Banjoko Motsude Farms, and uh, we do hope this message goes round and Nigerians to bring money into the we supply chain, <laughs> and then we'll have more. Thank you for having me. All right, so we'll take a break now. After the break, African creative markets will be in focus. If you're interested in the creatives, that will be your conversation. Join us after the break. This is Business Morning on Channels Television. Mm -hmm.